Stuart, thank you for joining us. Um, most obvious place to start is we've heard so much about uh, Nestle's um, vision for the confectionery category being a 10 billion category in 10 years. Um, what's the background behind that vision? Um, well, first of all, thanks for the opportunity to come and talk. I think the, the first thing I would say is the, the confectionery and fine food category was an engine of growth uh, within the industry for a significant period of time. And if you take the window that was kind of going from the middle of the previous decade through to the middle of this one, the category was growing at an average rate of 9.7%, which was well ahead of the um, passenger growth. And the category doubled in that particular window of time. Now, very interestingly, from 2014, the category kind of stalled is the reality. Um, and even allowing for currency fluctuations hasn't progressed at anything like the same rate. We're kind of, according to generation, 1% sort of compound annual growth rate. So a significant slowdown. And um, from a Nestle perspective, we were asking ourselves, well, one, why has this happened? And two, what can we do about it? And um, really the start point then was connecting this into some category research that we undertook. Um, Nestle as a group was undertaking it worldwide. We did some very specific research linked to this um, in this channel, but it's all about understanding consumer need states and uh, really understanding where the opportunities come from. And within this we've identified uh, nine very specific different need states uh, that, uh, that create opportunities uh, to really energise growth. And one which is universal, which is about really making sure the product is delivered in the best possible condition. So there are fundamentally 10 drivers to really uh, reconnecting with consumers. And the fundamental aim is therefore to reconnect this category with the forecast confectionery and fine food growth rate. Uh, sorry, th this category with the growth rate of passengers, I beg your pardon. And um, which is by according to ACI 7.1%. So if we can reconnect the category growth with passenger growth, we'll will basically grow the category to 10 billion in 10 years. You talked about the various factors that um, uh, you're looking to help aid that growth. What, what do you think are the most key of those factors that will propel, propel the category forward towards that target? I, it, it connects back into this really deep understanding of what consumers are, are looking for. Um, a number of our, our, our biggest customers are all talking about the importance of localness and therefore the ability to connect up the brand in a local way. The, our brands in local in ways across all the all the globe is really where the uh, part of the opportunity starts to arise, um, and from there it's then understanding how those particular need states that we've identified that I, I mentioned previously, we we connect those with the relevant passengers in the relevant terminals, because um, one of the interesting and wonderful challenges which this industry provides is that every retail location is different. Every terminal is different, the passenger mix is different, and we need to make sure that we have something which is effectively going to uh, connect with the group of passengers who are working in that, uh, that uh, travelling through that terminal. Mm -hmm. The critical factor is, and given the fact that Nestle has done this research over 34 different countries, um, and we've been able to map our findings from a travel retail perspective against that, the commonalities of the nine core category drivers that we talk about exist across all countries. Mm -hmm. Um, so the question then is, how do you execute those for that particular nationality? Mm -hmm. And what examples can you give me of what Nestle is doing at the moment to execute uh, that strategy for a particular nationality? Well, we're very much at the front end of uh, just getting started on all of this because we're bringing the, the research uh, we only completed at the back end of last year, working in partnership with Mindset, Peter and his team. Um, we then worked that through this, this category process, this uh, state-of-the-art category process that, that Nestle has. Um, and this brought us to the, the work that we first presented at the ACI in, in Reykjavik. So in practical terms, there's nothing specifically tangible to say we're doing this or we've done this or we've done that, past tense. We're starting around this, but we wanted to bring it out and get the conversation happening fast because it's not only the, the achievement of the category ambition of 10 billion will not be about what Nestle does in isolation. Nestle needs its retail partners working with us, but Nestle also, uh, or the category, will need all the players coming on board. So whether all of our competitors, whether it's Mondelez or Mars or Lindt or Ferrer or Godiva and whoever, um, we want everybody to embrace this thinking because in that time old uh, phrase, all ships climb on a rising tide and we want to get the confectionery and fine foods tide 
rising again. So has Nestle already reached out to uh, your Mondelez, Mars, the, uh, the rivals in the category in order to help work with them to help realise the vision? One has to be always careful about how one does this, but the, in terms of working with uh, competitors. But what we have done is done it publicly in, in the platform. So ACI, for example, is one. Um, the uh, Asia Pacific uh, Tax Free Show in Singapore, another example. And everything we're doing, we're being very public and open about what's, uh, what's there and the thinking that's, that's behind it. So we then encourage others to embrace. Have you had any feedback from yourself from the other confectionery companies about the, uh, about the vision? I, I think the, I, I think, uh, well, the answer is yes. Um, very positive, I'm pleased to say. Um, happy with what we've uh, been receiving because people are looking, people have recognised, whether it's the ACI and I in Reykjavik or the, the presentation in, uh, in Singapore, we're talking from a category perspective. We're referencing competitor brands. And again, it comes back to the thought that we, we need to be doing this as a, as a category. Mm -hmm. We can't do this in isolation. Um, what matters then will be how well we do our bit, how well the competitors do it. And then the competition bit, which is absolutely critical to, to any kind of healthy environment, mm -hmm. will effectively kick in. But positive feedback from, uh, from our competitors. And also, interesting, importantly, um, equally as importantly, if not more so, um, from some of our key customers. I guess so. Not only will uh, will key customers be an important part of it, we've also got to look at where the uh, where the travel retail market is growing and where the uh, traffic is growing fastest, which is the emerging markets in Asia. And how important will those be, in particular, in driving towards the ten in ten growth target? Um, one fundamental. Um, at the same time, it's quite interesting when you look back at the last few years, whilst the categories slowed. Um, Europe has continued to be an engine of growth for the confectionery category. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not going to be at the expense of Europe. Effectively, what we want are the, the emerging markets and uh, some of the Asian markets to really sort of um, come to the party, so to speak, and uh, get to that particular speed. One of the interesting challenges that we face, everybody faces, is the growth of the uh, outbound Chinese consumers is not as yet necessarily helping our category for the simple reason that the Chinese consumer never grew up with confectionery as part of the, the snacking repertoire. Um, so there's a job to be done in terms of engaging the, the Chinese consumer in the, the fun and the pleasure that this particular category can, uh, can bring uh, to them. So there's kind of a mid to long term game that all of us have to play. Um, but when we crack that, then there will be a lot of wind under the wings. Have you got a strategy for achieving that, for um, bringing out that side of the Chinese consumers, sort of getting them into the sort of fun of the confectionery category? It, it, it's, um, it's a good question. There, there's a, there's a two-pronged approach to it. One is fundamentally what happens day in, day out in the domestic market. Um, uh, my counterpart in L'Oreal, was talking to him last year, he was regaling me with the fact that they benefit from the fact that the the perfumes, cosmetics, the beauty category has been uh, working for a long time domestically within China and they found a way to tap into the, the mindset of the Chinese consumers and engage. We have to do the same with our category um, and I think that's, uh, and it's, so it's one, on what we do on the domestic front and then two, when they are out and travelling, helping them navigate what's in the category. I think there's an appetite for it. One of our good colleagues who works in head office in Switzerland worked in China for many years. We know there is an appetite there it's about helping the Chinese consumers uh, understand and navigate uh, what it is that they're going to be taking back home. And is one way of achieving that by having specific high profile activations and that sort of thing to introduce your products to the Chinese consumers so they understand it better? In part, yes, but um, I think there's been a lot talked within the industry about how the importance of engaging with the Chinese consumer digitally and upfront before their journey begins. Um, they are the most digitally savvy. I've, been, I've had the good fortune to be in, in China on a number of occasions over the last decade and to see how advanced they are uh, as a country in relation to digital e-commerce and such like. Um, we think in the West we're doing some quite sexy stuff with various things that's happening on Amazon or Facebook or uh, YouTube and whatever. It's far better connected out there and they're far more at the front end of what's going on. So I think we have a job to do to really understand how they think and they approach. Uh, and I think that's also from a Nestle standpoint why we've, for a couple of years now, had somebody based in Beijing um, working with our team there, really understanding the, uh, the psyche and how we, uh, most importantly, connect 
um, in the ways in which the consumer is connecting with brands. Do you think progress is being made in terms of understanding that psyche then? Progress is being made for sure, and uh, you know you see it. Retailers are really getting switched on to the. You look at the introduction of Alipay, the way in which people are, are uh, engaging with consumers up front before they're le um, they're leaving the country. So, no, for sure it's happening. I think we collectively just need to do more and mm -hmm. faster. And I think uh, the more we do, and the more the more we listen and understand how they're looking to connect and engage, the better it will help us tailor the offer. Yeah. And what would you say are the uh, main obstacles to hitting the uh, ten billion dollar target? Um, there's always plenty of obstacles that sit in the way, and I could give you a list as long as my arm. Um, <laughs> I, I think the uh, the bigger challenge is more about getting focused on those key buckets that are going to make the difference, and it's it's a, uh, a um, opportunity by opportunity, working our way around with our retail partners and understanding exactly what they're looking for, matching that with what the consumers are looking for in the, the terminals, um, marrying up the difference between what a low-cost shopper is looking for, what somebody who's travelling long-haul coming out of Asia versus somebody who's long-haul coming out of Latin America, for example, um, and um, the multitude of other um, distractions, let's call it, that are available to um, travellers when they're passing through airports now. Um, which means that their shopping is not the default activity that it used to be. Um, and I think making sure that we can support and drive footfall into store um, is going to be key. The one biggest opportunity I look at rather than a hurdle is the fact that the world is going more and more e-commerce. People are shopping more and more their phone, laptop and such like. Um, the human interaction is declining in those particular exchanges. The airport opportunity provides a wonderful world of face-to-face -face occasion that you can actually get and put your brand in front of cons uh, a, uh, a consumer that's more missing from the day-to-day the -day interactions. Uh, and we should never dismiss the opportunity of the, the five senses uh, that we can allow ourselves to play with in that particular environment. So I think we're sitting on something which is really quite exciting. Uh, and I think most brand owners understand that. Um, the uh, the only other challenge that sits within it is then just making sure that it works in the bottom line for all the key stakeholders, the, the airports, the retailers and the brand owners, as well as delivering the value to the consumer. We make that work, then we're all going to be very happy people. Of course. Uh, what do you want to see from those other stakeholders, from the retailers and the airports, to help you achieve that vision? Well, I think it's a sense of, um, first of thing is seeing it as our vision, and it's a collective thing. It's something we're bringing to the party, but we're bringing it to the party and putting it on the table openly say to share with everyone. We're not hiding it away and just showing one or two. Bringing it out publicly, saying we see a way forward. And other people will bring ideas to the table about how we can execute. We're looking at it from the start point of understanding consumer needs state. Our, our, our retail partners um, are, have all the skills of you know, fantastic sets of retailers. And how we blend those is going to be key. So I think the, uh, the, there already is an openness to the opportunity, an appetite um, to always uh, explore and expand for more. Then it's just a function of applying the resource and off we go.